Was Muhammad Masihullah? No. He said, what was he? He's Rasulullah. Yes. But you see, Isa is Rasul and Masih. In your Quran. Rasul and Ila Bani Israel. He's Rasul to Bani Israel. And he's Masih. Masih, he's somebody. He's Masih and Rasul. Your prophet is only Rasul. Can you say, huh? Look, he's telling you, this is so in the Quran, you see, yes. Hmm. He scored a point. One Jesus, Jesus is a degree above Muhammad. One degree above Muhammad. He's not telling you that. But he's proved it to you. See, you know, Jesus was born miraculously, without any male intervention, without a man. You believe that? Yes. He was born miraculously. Was Muhammad so born? Was Muhammad born like that? No. He had a father and a mother. No. Yes. Another degree for Jesus. You know, Jesus, he gave life to the dead. What do you say? Bismillah. By Allah. Did Muhammad give life to the dead, Bismillah? He says, no. Not that I know. Another degree for Jesus. Where is your Prophet Muhammad? Now, nah. he's buried in Medina. Perhaps his bones have rotted in the grave. So no, we believe he's Hayatun Nabi, he's a living prophet. I say, yes, that's metaphysically, spiritually, but physically, maybe his bones have rotted in the grave. So you say, maybe, maybe. Where is Jesus? He's in heaven. He's coming back. I said, yes. He's alive. He said, yes. He's coming back. He said, yes. He said, don't you think God had a purpose in doing all that? He does things for nothing. Huh? Without purpose, he does all this. You know, around the corner, next week or so, you're having Eid al-Adha, Qurbani. Oh, two weeks time. You're going to have some <laughs> big fight going on. I'm glad I'll be away. But when the Qurbani time comes, you look for a sheep or a goat or a cow without any flaw, without blemish, horn not broken, ear not cut, not blind, not limping, right? Yes. So if God Almighty wants to make a sacrifice for His creation, is He going to look for second best? Hmm? Will you look for second best? When you look for the best for Qurbani, Allah is going to look for second best. You know who's second best? He's proved it to you. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's proved it to you. That he is second best in everything. Look, Jesus is superior. Now you fight, argue, debate. You'll come out second best also. You are not equipped, my dear friends. I had our Molvis, you know, the Indian Molvis, Sheikhs and ours. I'm telling them, I said, come on, answer. Molvis, equivalent to your Sheikhs and your Imams. I'm asking them, I said, look, this is what the guy is now telling us. Answer that. You just can't say, shh, shh, go away. You are mad. Most especially the Malay, he's militant. See, the Indian can afford to do that. I don't want to talk to you. Run away. But the Malay is a fighter. You see? And the fighter, when he loses, he loses very heavily. Yeah, it's so. That guy, then he opts to go the other side and he fights back to prove that he hasn't made a mistake. He's on the war path against all Muslims. Once we lose our son, our brother, that guy is going to fight, really fight. He's going to fight to convert everybody. He wants to prove to you he hasn't made a mistake. And the Christian has got a system. He's making him to memorize verses. And he goes out. I and my father are one. He that is in me has seen the father. No man comes on the father but by me. The fool might not know anything else. But he's programmed. This is the method. They have methods. They work. We, we convert somebody, it's all right. You say, Friday, you know, come to the Salat. And when you meet somebody, say, Salaam Alaikum. You know, and you shake hand like this, like that. Finish. We are satisfied. He's a Muslim now. No, they put you on the war path. And there's no better way to entrench the guy into the religion than making him into a fighter. They make, them into, make you into fighters. How do you respond? How do you handle this? Look, our own internal trouble, troubles, I said, look brothers, you go to your sheikhs and imams, solve it with them. Please don't ask me questions. You tell me about the Christian, 
the Jew, the Hindu, the atheist, that guy said this and how do we respond? This guy here, you know, he hit me like this, how do I defend myself next time? That is my job. And for that, I have written small booklets, tracts. Christ in Islam. Free, wallah, it's free. Go and pick it up from Rashmi's supermarket. Crucifixion or crucifixion, free. Is the Bible God's word? Free. What the Bible says about Muhammad, free. But you too. Oh, don't use the word, too lazy. You're too lazy to go and pick it up. Or you're too proud, too arrogant. You don't need it. It answers your problems, wallah. And it's so easy. It's like child's play. Once you know how to do the batting, it's like child's play. This being Christ, Basi, being born miraculous, and miracles, it means nothing. Wallah, it means nothing. If you only know something about his book. And tonight, we have just given you something. This little booklet. I hope everybody's got it. Everybody's got it by now? Everybody? Yes? See? They are there. Please, before you go at least, pick them up. Yes, there are plenty here. Plenty here, we brought for you. Each and every one should have one. This little booklet, little piece of thing, 12 pages, only 12 pages, 6 actually, 2 sides makes it 12, only 6 pages, 12 because you count both sides. 6 pages, 6 times 2 is 12. Otherwise, only 6 sheets, 6 sheets. You master this little booklet, there isn't a Christian born who can stand before you. Allah has given you that privilege. I give you this stone that you can crack the Jalut skull. This is that little stone that Dawud picked up. We went, went to fight Jalut, you remember? What did he fight with? A little pebble in his sling and he cracked the Jalut skull. This is that pebble intellectually. This is that pebble, that little stone. Inside here, it tells you very, very easy. It tells you how to talk to the Christian. You start. Any person you meet, any person you meet, you ask him a simple question. Innocent, very innocent question. What church you belong to? And it is so inoffensive. This question, what church you belong to? Because they are asking one another all the time, what church you belong to? Because there are a thousand churches among the whites of South Africa. Maybe the color is the same. The African have got 3,000 different churches. So they always ask, what church you belong to? What church you belong to? So it's an innocent question. You ask the, anybody. No, you say, no, I'm a Muslim. I say, sorry, I thought you, know, you were a Christian. Because you didn't have the kufia. You say, I don't know. You look like a color. You all look the same, don't you? We have among us, from pure white to pure black. The color also, from pure white to pure black. From the looks we can't make out who's who, it's only when we have the kufya on. So, say, I'm sorry. I thought you know you were a colored Christian. What church you belong to? So he gives you a name. Any name. You never heard the name in your life before. He's a Mennonite. You never heard it. He's a Christadelphian. You never heard it. He's a Mormon. You never heard it. Don't worry. Anything, he responds to your question. So what church you belong to? If he gives you an answer, that means he's your customer. Unless he says, I'm a Jew, unless I'm a Hindu, mm. unless he says, I, I don't believe in God, then he's a different type of customer. But he's your customer. They're all our customers. But if he gives you an answer, he's your customer. So you ask him, well, you also believe that Christ died for your sins? Now, that's a common denominator. Every Christian must believe. No man, there are hundred different, thousand different churches, but they all believe that Christ died for the sin. See, man is cowed by nature. He wants somebody else to carry his burden for him. I have a headache and you take the pill. I got a rotten appendix and operate yours and mine gets healed. <laughs> this is man. Man is like that. If it can work, if it works, it doesn't work that way. But spiritually they say it works. They go and commit incest with their own little three-year-olds and Christ pays for it. Hitler killed six million Jews and 40 million people died in the Second World War because of him. But if he believes in Christ, he goes to heaven. See, Christ paid for it all. This is their mentality. The greater the sin, they say the greater the redemption.
Redemption.